So, are you in Ireland? No, I, well, I, I'm from Ireland, but I moved to London when I was uh, uh, in my twenty, early twenties, and uh, okay. I've lived, I've lived in the UK ever since. Yeah, I didn't know that you were Irish. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm my also first... Irish. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're actually Irish. <laughs> I, I have an Irish appearance yeah. and personality and name and. Uh, I have, I definitely have Irish in my blood some time ago, but I've never actually been there. I always want to do a joke about uh, someone saying, an American saying, yes, I'm Irish. I turn my back on the gay people at the St. Patrick's Day Parade or something. <laughs> there's something. There's something there, but I don't know what the joke is yet, you know. Keep um, working on it. But there's, there's definitely something there. So how, how, how have you been? How's, how's, um, uh, how's it been not being on Twitter? Uh, well, I, I was a bit distraught at first, uh, for the first week, um, and yeah, just because it's so, it's so wrong and unfair, and because there's no accountability process, um, the appeal process is a joke, and you just get back a form response, and obviously Twitter doesn't need to follow their own rules. <laughs> I mean, mm. they don't, I, I yeah. mean, it just... Uh, well, they didn't with Trump. Trump threatens threatens another country with violence, and they don't take him off. You know, no, it's just it's they crazy. make it up as they go along. Well, and I mean, lots of people have tweeted similar things to what I tweeted. Like it's been, it was reported a bunch of times that I was kicked off for saying men aren't women and for asking what the difference is between a trans woman and a man. But that's not why I was kicked off. Um, no, even though if it was, it would be equally ridiculous. You know? Yeah, I mean, what, it's illegal to say that men aren't women? Like, I mean, <laughs> how are we supposed to function as a society yeah. if we can't <laughs> differentiate between men and women? Or we can't even, I mean, I guess that's where we're going with trans activism, trans trans activism is that we can't, we're no longer yeah. allowed to differentiate between men and women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 and, and you, if I, if I, I, I think I saw, I don't know how I saw it, whether it was a screen grab or something, but I saw the tweet that you were banned from Twitter from, uh, and we can't talk about, we'll probably get, we'll probably get chucked off Twitter if we mention his, his name. So let's not, let's not say his name, but you were banned for saying the words about a certain person. That's him. Yeah. So I d identified a person who didn't want to be talked about. Essentially, he's, this individual is, you know, going around the internet and threatening people with litigation or having them banned from various social media platforms, um, including, I think, WordPress, for, for saying his name and for discussing things that he's done, which are <laughs> unethical, to say the least. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. my favorite My favorite ones... Uh, that I've seen are the uh, um, approaching, approaching, asking for advice on how to approach young girls to talk about um, uh, how they insert tampon tampons. I mean, I mean, it's the most extraordinary thing. And the thing is, I tell that the, one of the things I find so hard about this discussion. Um, sorry to ramble on, but 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 one of the things I find so hard about this discussion is when you try to tell people these stories. They're so grotesque and so horrible that people shut down. They they don't want they either don't want to hear it or they don't believe it. Mm -hmm. But the, but the sheer nature of some of the craziness is such that they just can't take it in. People look at me when like I have two heads when I tell them some of this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think people don't want to believe it, and I think that if people do believe it, then they have to contend with the fact that this is what you know, a lot of feminists have been warning people about in terms of gender identity ideology and all this legislation is that, you know, like if we go along with all this, what might happen is that men who are predators will have access to, you know, female facilities, female only spaces, or will be able to, for example, sue estheticians who decline to give them a Brazilian bikini wax. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk about about what this person did. Although uh, obviously we won't say his name. Um, uh, can you can you do, sorry? I, I it's the time we're both interviewing each other. But I'm, I'm I like really it. Excited. I like it. <laughs> I'm excited to have you here because because I feel like you were shut down so violently that I'm really excited about being able to tweet this at some point and get and get it out there. So so let me ask you because a lot of people don't know this story. 
what did this person do? Can you explain the beautician story? Right. So here in Vancouver, um, or in the Vancouver area, so including the suburbs, this man was calling local estheticians and asking them to give him a Brazilian bikini wax. And when the estheticians declined and said, we only offer this service to women, and some of these women, you know, worked out of their homes. So this, I mean, this is a situation where you would be alone in your house with a man. Um, so naturally, women would feel uncomfortable doing that. But also, apparently, I mean, I don't know all that much about Brazilian bikini waxes, but um, apparently, like, to wax a man's genitals is different than waxing women yeah. so it's like yeah. a, an entirely different service and you need a different kind of wax i guess and it's a different training so i mean and you know like it, so it i wish someone had said yes <laughs> <laughs> you know I, just one it would only take one person to say yes and he would he would he wouldn't be a problem <laughs> i think it was i think miranda yardley told me that she would gladly give him a brazilian <laughs> Yes, yes, with the wrong clear. <laughs> so it sounds like there's some people who are willing to help him out with that. But uh, yeah. yeah, so these women declined and said, no, we, we only offer this service to women. And then he tried to sue a bunch of them. Like he took a bunch of them to human rights court. And um, I think, I, I believe he's dropped all, if not most of the cases since then. Um, and I can't confirm sh for sure why, but I've I've heard it's that it's the attention, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I I sh probably shouldn't speculate, but there has been I I do have an idea of why he dropped the cases and oh, it's... tell me later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, anyway, so uh, yeah, and 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 this person also recently, maybe last month went in at a, a Langley Township Council meeting, which Langley's a suburb of Vancouver, and gloated about having personally kicked me off Twitter. Yes, I so saw So Twitter that. can yeah. no longer, I mean, not that they could have defended this really legitimately in the first place, but they can no longer pretend that they suspended me for breaking any rule, whether it mm -hmm. was this misgendering rule or this dead naming rule, I mean, these these rules make no sense and those words make no sense but you know this person basically has a contact at twitter and went to their contact and had them ban me permanently from twitter in attempt to silence me destroy my career etc and do you think um do you think that happened um entirely because of him or do you think that they were longing for an excuse to get you off twitter um, well, that's a good question because <laughs> it could be both. Uh, I mean, certainly, I, like I was being targeted because in the month or month or two, you know, it, it was basically started really amping up in November. Um, but they started going through my older tweets and temporarily suspending me and making me remove tweets that had specific, um, well, were specifically directed either at trans activists because there was another person at, that I had I had been tweeting about and this person had been really set on no platforming and going after local feminists here in Vancouver um, and Twitter all of a sudden found every single tweet that I'd ever posted about this person and made me take them down right so right, this person yeah. perhaps also had a contact at Twitter it's interesting oh. how much power these people have yeah <laughs> But but isn't it also isn't it also true that the um, here's two things that 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 are doubly unfair about this case. The first thing is that the person who you supposedly misgendered goes by a male and female name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I'm. So how on earth did you misgender them? Well, they're misgendering themselves, I guess. So maybe <laughs> they should be banned from Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. And the second thing is. You were um, uh, misgendering as a term and terms and condition that would lead to a ban came came happened after you made the tweet that got you banned. Right. Um, so they banned you for a rule that wasn't uh, against the rules when you broke it. Yeah, exactly. So they went through my tweets from, 
yeah, they were going through past tweets and retroactively applying this new rule. And the new, yeah, the new rule hadn't been announced. Like no user had been informed that they'd changed the rules. The day that I was permanently suspended, it was a Friday night. I was at the bar, like having drinks with a friend. So it was like, I don't know, like 10, 30 or 11 p.m. at night when they suspended me. And that was the same day that the press had picked up this story about Twitter changing their rules to include these rules around misgendering. And the rules are still not clear, like they're still not outlined clearly anywhere, but suddenly the press began reporting on it. So that was kind of like a funny coincidence. But yeah, all these tweets were from before they changed the terms of service. So they're just, I mean, it's so sketchy and it's so unethical and unfair yeah 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 well the, but I, i've always i've always felt that twitter uh doesn't seem to actually know what the service is you know they they've never really seemed to understand it they the users have always understood twitter better than the the people who work on it and and and, and, and you know i mean the best example I have, and I'm sorry, this is my this is my other obsession beyond gender identity at the moment. Mm -hmm. But my other obsession is um, the replies on Twitter. You know, the, the, you you see you see I see friends of mine saying "fuck off" to me, and I go, "Why are they saying that?" <laughs> and they're, they're replying to one of six other people who's in the thread. Yeah, you know, and it's just a broken service, you know, and it and and as you say, the way it allowed the alt-right to gather um uh and by the way i think there's a lot of crossover i'm sure you agree on uh, alt-right and some of this um identity politics thing i think i think there's a lot of alt-right people who are kind of um surfing on the wave that all these kind of woke stasi types have created you know mm -hmm. um uh I, 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 maybe we can talk about that later but 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 um but for me it just seems like twitter is just completely broken and these and 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 it seems to me that you're one of the victims of 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 it that i mean I, there's just no fairness to it there's zero fairness to it and i just don't see how they can go on with that kind of uh uh what's what's the word they say corporate culture well and i mean they they did initially launch themselves and sell themselves and grow as a platform on the basis that they were a platform for free speech and free expression and free debate. They know that the reason that people use Twitter is to participate in public conversation. And so, you know, to build their platform and to build their company and to profit so much on this basis and then all of a sudden change their minds and start kicking people off for ideological reasons or personal reasons or because their friends don't <laughs> like certain users or whatever. I saw, it was funny actually, because I saw your tweet um, the other day, like responding to Biz Stone. And Biz Stone, he's one of the founders of Twitter. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, he. Yeah, I think he was, uh, he was once photographed with the person we were talking about earlier. Indeed. Interesting. Yeah. What, remind yeah. me what he said that you were responding to. I'm trying to find it. Hold on a sec. What did I say? Oh, yeah. He said, uh, we serve the public conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wrote, removes Megan Murphy from Twitter for misgendering a pedophilic con man. Yeah. You know. The Which public is conversation. is Well, it's all about protecting pedophiles and scam artists. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And funnily enough, like, um, what's interesting about the person who came after you <clears throat> and came after those um, those women who were offering uh, uh, Brazilians is that um, I heard someone say, and I don't know how true this is, maybe you can fill me in on this, but wasn't the uh, grift in this particular case to sue these women, uh, threaten to take them through the courts, and then uh, ask them for go away, uh, go away money, for nuisance money, for go away money. Um, uh, to basically say, I won't sue you, but you have to pay me, I don't know, a grand or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and this individual has a history of doing this to many other businesses, although just as yeah. a regular man, not as a trans woman. I, I mean, I just suspect that he saw this as an opportunity to, you know, uh, the, yeah, the, the, a person who has a long history of going after businesses to sue them for all these, like, ridiculous slash illegitimate claims like 
I ordered a pizza and my pizza turned up all messed up and now you owe me free pizzas for life, like that kind of thing. And he's right, involved yeah. in so many different court cases. I don't know if you've seen all these court documents floating around, no. but you know, he's suing a theater company because they lit sage or incense and it gave him a panic attack and he's suing <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, this is his thing. This is his M.O. Like, it's clearly, like, I don't know if it's how he makes a living or what, but, like, ne- this is just the yeah. next thing. But now it's being defended under the guise of, you know, trans rights or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And and also didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, what was I going to say about something? Uh, there was, oh, yeah. And, of course, there's all this evidence that he's posted himself. Um, of him, you know, going into uh, women's restrooms. He, you know, when people think of trans women, and, and this is something that I know you, you you know is a problem, but most people think of trans women as transsexuals who have transitioned and have had operations and, and so on and so forth. People who suffer from gender dysphoria. But 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 this person is just someone who's put on some lipstick. Wouldn't, wouldn't, would you say that's unfair? Well, yeah, and I mean... Yeah, I think you're right. I think that the general public probably does assume that what a trans woman is, is like you say, somebody who's on hormones, somebody who's gotten surgery, somebody who's legitimately trying to live as a woman. I don't agree with that phrasing. Like, I don't know what it means to live as a woman. I I think that's probably going to be rooted in sexist stereotypes if we get right down to it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I don't think he's made any efforts to try to live as a woman um in, in fact his uh, all his activities that i've seen seem to be uh, him living as a, a very i don't know how to pronounce this word it's one of those words i've read but never said out loud priapic <laughs> is that the word priapic i don't even know uh, what that word is <laughs> uh, tumescent uh, engorged uh basically he's horny he's a horny guy and and he 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 Fetishist. seems to be going into various different places, virtual places and real life places, and and doing two things, getting sexual pleasure from entering these places and getting a uh, feeling of domination and power over the people he's with. That, yeah. That's what it looks like to me. Oh, yeah, totally. I, I feel fairly certain that it's some kind of fetish and it's titillating for him. Yeah. And I think that well, there's plenty of men who are like that. One of the ones I saw and and I, I, again, I, I I haven't shared it because when you sh- you know I, I I think for the moment I'm probably more use uh, on Twitter than off, um, so I haven't shared it because I know that when, when people share things that that he's done, they get banned from Twitter like you did. But but one of the things I saw was um, a photograph he took of an innocuous photograph of of some. I can't remember what it was. Wet wipes. Yes, that's what it was. Wet wipes on a on a kitchen counter, on a bathroom counter. Uh, do you know this one that I'm going to tell you about? No, oh, I don't okay. know this one. This might be fun. This might be fun for you. And it was apparently posted to a teenager's um, Facebook group about makeup tips. Okay, and it was a picture of some wet wipes. But very prominent to the left of the wet wipes is a huge realistic dildo. You know. Yeah, have you not seen this one? No, gross. Yeah, yeah. I know, and I hope I. I mean, you know, as I say, because the because it's so hard to track what he's been up to. Um, but I, I, I imagine you know the the site. Uh, I was talking about this yesterday, actually, but I would imagine it's on Kiwi Farms, you know, which is a site that I never share because I always feel that uh, the the way they talk about everyone is kind of uniformly well it's transphobic it feels like a transphobic site they 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 uh but then again they're also because they hate they because they hate their target so much they do a lot of research you know mm. so uh and and the thing i was pointing out the other day is over in the uk there's a uh over here in the uk there's a there's a kind of thing going around that mum's net which is a huge forum for, for mums in the UK, is a hate group, you know? Mm. Uh, and it's such a, a vile inversion of the truth. Mumsnet is actually a collection of brilliant women who have broken all sorts of stories, raised all sorts of money, 
are incredibly funny and sly and brilliant. They're like a, a huge bunch of Nancy Drews. That's the way I, I think of them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to call them a hate group and to focus attention on them while ignoring Kiwi farms, I think, I think speaks to the, to, the, to the misogyny that's at the heart of the movement, combined with, I think, no concern for trans people. Because if they really were concerned about trans people, they, they, everyone would know about Kiwi farms. Mm -hmm. But no one knows about Kiwi Farms because of the key people who are on it, like our friend and like a few friends that I've met, <laughs> who if they if they wrote if they actually dug into these this site and looked at what what these people have been up to, it, it would be a, a huge scandal. You oh, know? Okay, yeah, like I'm I'm not that familiar with Kiwi Farms. I think I've only come across it a couple of times, and it has been specifically in relation to this issue. So, you know, finding all this info that people have dug up about these really kind of misogynist, shifty men who are starting smear campaigns against women who challenge trans activism and trans ideology. So I don't know much about it other than that, but that's yeah. interesting. I mean, the hypocrisy... I mean, I can't, I can't... I always have to stop reading it after a while because it's so... Like, I well, I was quite um, involved in the Gamergate um, uh, stuff. Okay. Uh, because that was another time where I saw that, that women were, were being uh, bullied and everyone had a different idea of what was going on. There were, there were, you know, there, there, some people thought it was a consumer, a consumer rights campaign, and you know, it, well, it wasn't. It was an anti, it was an anti uh, woman, anti gay, anti trans campaign. You know, so I, 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 I was very involved in that, and I saw a similar thing happening that's been happening here, which is, which is, no one knows what the truth is. The truth has become very, very muddled. Um, uh, uh, you know, you and I know that lesbians are being pressured. Uh, through all sorts of different ways into accepting uh, trans women in their dating pool. Um, but but the wider world just simply doesn't know it. And when you tell people, they don't believe it. No. Um, can we move on to that, actually? What, ha, have you seen, uh, what evidence have you seen of this? Because it's something I've been talking about a lot today, uh, of, the, of the coercion that, uh, or is it coercion, uh, that's going on at the moment? With regard to lesbians? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, the, I mean, trans ideology cannot coexist with lesbianism, <laughs> right? Like you can't, the, you can't, a lesbian can't exist if we aren't going to say that women are female because of course lesbianism is about being specifically attracted to other females and not to males. So if lesbians are now being told that they have to consider males as sexual partners if they identify as women, despite the fact that they still have male bodies, then that just means lesbians have to be attracted to whoever, so then they're not lesbians anymore. Like, it's so, it's so ridiculous and it's so crazy to me that people aren't seeing this as, like, really repulsive, like bullying and pressuring lesbians into sleeping with men or dating men. I mean, now, when I talk to people about it, they don't believe it's happening. So can, can you, can you, I mean, I'm not sure how, how much you know about that particular area, but I, but I, I, I imagine you're all across it. So, so that's why I'm asking. But, but what kind of forms does the coercion take? Well, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Cause like, I mean, I, this is just from what other, I mean, I'm not a lesbian, so I can't speak from personal experience, but other lesbians, especially young lesbians in the in the Vancouver community, I mean, there's quite a big queer community here in Vancouver. And I think it's, it's, I think it's really bad for young lesbians, because they, you know, I, I say the queer community is big, but it's also small, like this is still, we're still talking about a minority population. Mm -hmm. And so there's not that many people for lesbians to hang out with in Vancouver. So they're trying to find their people. They want to hang out with other lesbians. They want to participate in the queer community and in queer activism and go to queer nights and queer bars and stuff. And this trans activism has taken hold. And so I think the pressure is quite harsh. And from what I, I'm also told, I also don't use dating apps because, well, I, I mean, 
I'm in a relationship, but even if I were not, I think that dating apps are weird and gross. But, <laughs> but yeah, like their lesbians are always saying that there's like dudes popping up in their feeds. So they mm. choose women only in their preferences on the dating apps, but like, but then, they still get then dudes. men show up. And I mean, I think often, like, like we were talking about before, often they're kind of fetishists. Like, it's like, you mm. know that you don't pass as a woman. You know that these women don't want to date you because they specify that they only want to date other women. And you're showing up in their dating apps as an option and wanting these and wanting to engage with these women and trying to engage with these women like it's like trickery and like it's like some weird power game or they're getting off on it or something. It's just it's gross. Like there's something I don't know what this might this might be something to pause for. But um, I read something very disturbing the other day. and I'm just going to try and call it up. Just give me one sec. Uh, let me just see if I can find this. It's uh, it's the w wonderful Kathleen Stock. I don't know if you know her. She's mm -hmm. a philosophy philosophy professor. Uh, she's really brilliant. Uh, I I she, I think she's great. Uh, do you know she? Did, did you see the Coen Brothers um, uh, Western? No, I didn't watch it. Was it good? It's it's really good. I love okay, it. You okay, know, I'll watch but it. I love westerns. But there's there's one particular cowboy in one story, very calm, very centered guy who thinks things through. And and I think that I, I think that's Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll check it out. Um, um, so let me see if I can find this uh, story. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, uh, I may not be able to find it. Okay, let me let me just there. It basically. Um, uh, Kathleen, oh yeah, here we go. This is it. Kathleen tweeted, impossible to overstate recent dereliction of duty by Stonewall UK to lesbians. They're trying to alter what counts as sex by deception to females generally trying to, uh, brackets, trying to remove sex as protected under Equality Act to kids, brackets, discouraging investigation of high number of gay kids transitioning, you know, uh, but the big thing that she was highlighting here was um, was Stonewall's new policy on sex by deception, where they say Stonewall will support calls for a judicial review to clarify prosecution policy and guidance and amend it where necessary with due regard to the trans person's right to privacy. Oh, wow. Now, I don't know if I, I'm sh I don't know about you, but sex by deception, I think, is pretty clear cut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, I well, mean, that's is, not yeah, I mean, it's all these, all these policies, all like everything is just going out the window in favor of trans yeah. ideology. I mean, there's nothing anymore. There's no rules. And I mean, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the thing about gender identity legislation is it's like, there's no rules anymore because if there's no process there's no, you know, doctor's appointments. There's no, you have to get surgery. I mean, that, the those issues are all debatable too. I'm not necessarily saying that, it, I, well, I don't believe that it's possible to change sex even if you get surgery, but at least we, we could be having that conversation if that were the rule, but no longer is that the rule. Now the rule is just today I decide to identify as a woman. Therefore today I'm literally female, even though last week I was male. And I can go into female spaces. And I can do whatever I, I want and it's all justified. Yeah. And I can take my favorite story about the, the one that I think clarifies it better than anything else is Pippa Bunce over here. Do you know Pippa Bunce? Do you know this story? I don't think. Or do I? I'm not sure. Remind me. Pippa Bunce is a, a crossdresser who, okay. who um, a couple of days a week uh, identifies as a woman and then the rest of the week identifies as a man. Oh, fun. Yeah, uh, which is fine, you know, no problem with that at all. But the thing that um, uh, annoys, annoyed me and annoyed a lot of feminists that I know, although I'm not a feminist, I'm a feminist ally, I know, I know that's, <laughs> but, but um, uh, the thing that uh, Pippa Bunce did was they took a place from a, a woman on a 100 women in business list. You know? <laughs> okay, so I think I did read about that, yeah. Yeah. So a hundred, so so a woman who should have been on that list was not had her place taken by a crossdresser, and we are supposed to agree that that crossdresser who only identifies as a woman a couple of days a week is a woman. Yeah, it's 
it's unbelievable. It's like mass gaslighting. Yeah, yeah, it is, and it's and it's and it's very hard to fight because, as I say, when you tell people, they they feel like they must be missing something because it's so absurd that they simply just they just can't take it in. Sometimes, you know. I think yeah, I think they think we're exaggerating or we're just cherry picking these super weird cases to use as an example to defend our supposed transphobia mm. when in reality this is happening all over the place and men are getting transferred into women's prisons and men are going into women's change rooms and men are winning women's sports competitions and, yeah yeah that's that's um, the one that i think i think that's going has to explode at some point the sports thing because yeah. i mean someone pointed out the olympics is is i don't know is it two years away it's a long time to wait, the Olympics, but I'm sure there's some, going to be something before then where people are going to be watching TV and they're going to say, now, h hang on, that person is twice the size of the person they're fighting or cycling against or playing squash against, you know? That surely isn't fair, you know? And, and, and the story that I know, I never share it because Joe Rogan is a bit, you know, he's got too many connections with the alt-right for my taste. But 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 Joe Rogan did do a very good video on the trans woman who, who was doing, uh, I can't remember the name of it, the world, the wrestling, uh, the combination wrestling fighting thing. What's it called? Oh, WWF. MMA? MMA. MMA. Yeah. Um, is uh, it Fallon uh, Fox? Is it yeah, that person? Yeah, Fallon Fox. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who didn't tell anyone that uh, they were trans, that, that they were uh, that they used to be a man, and beat the hell out of a, 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 a of a woman. So so people who are watching a sports program without knowing it. I mean, it's like something out of Black Mirror. Mm -hmm. Without knowing it, are watching a man beat up a woman. You know? Yeah, but it's so <laughs> messed up. I mean, uh, yeah, I think I think this sports thing has actually been the thing that has gotten to people like i think people who weren't paying attention to what was going on with all this legislation and all this trans rights activism trans activism i don't really think it's about rights but um i think the sports thing really got people being like okay wait no stop this is unfair because they can see it they can see like a large man towering over smaller women holding their gold medal or whatever it yeah. is, you know, and people just How in their you... guts are like, no, like people, people know that males and females are different. And it's something, it's so weird to even have to argue about it and to defend it and to explain why males and females are different. But people know, like, if you look at a man, you can tell that he's a man just based on you know, bone structure, muscle mass, like all, and all these, these kind of subconscious signals that we aren't even aware of, you know, like men and women yeah. smell different. Do you know what I mean? That's not something you would be aware of, but in your brain, your brain yeah, knows, yeah. like, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, yeah. in innately. Absolutely. And, and one of the things that I find, uh, uh, uh annoying about, about this as well is that I think there are a lot of trans mm -hmm. people who who may may be going along with the uh, mainstream view of things with with a, a number of different uh, 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 expectations, false expectations of wider society that are being uh, promoted by these ideas, like like the the phrase trans women are women get over it. You know, the, 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 that's one that was in the UK. I think Stonewall came up with that one, you know, and it's like it's like she, of course, everyone is going to be polite and courteous to a, to another person if that person is suffering from gender dysphoria. But to ask people to break their idea of what reality means to suit someone else, it, it's never, ever going to happen. And, and what it's doing, I think, is it's leading vulnerable people to believe they're going to get a different reaction from society when 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 they're not. Yeah. And you know, like the best example recently was the uh, that very very big uh, trans woman in the uh, video games shop, the GameStop. Did you see that one? Yeah, I did see that one. Yeah. Yeah, and and that person was going insane because this 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 guy behind the counter wouldn't call him ma'am. Would they kept calling him sir? And the thing is. The, the the agreement of being courteous and stuff 
it will go so far. But but there are certain people, and they'll never accept it. They'll never accept the evidence of their eyes uh, of going against the evidence. They'll never be able to go against the ev evidence of their eyes. You yeah. Know? And I actually, I think that trans ideology is actually quite cruel for trans identified people because it sells a lie, right? So, mm, so that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So gender identity ideology is telling not only adults but kids like that you can literally become the other sex and people will treat you as that sex. So if you decide to transition, people will see you as a girl and treat you as a girl or see you as a woman and treat you as a woman. And it doesn't happen because most <laughs> trans identified people are not going to pass and mm. people are still going to perceive you as male and still treat you as such. And you, you go through all these torturous processes, like those those surgeries are really awful, intense surgeries that you have to go through. You go on hormones, you're sterilized, you know, like we don't even know the, the extent to which hormones impact people, but we know of some negative impacts mm. on their bodies. Um, and and you come out the other end and you you don't get what you were told you would get. Like, mm, I think it's yeah. so wrong, and I think it's so cruel to sell people this lie. I mean, it's wrong and, and cruel in other ways to, to gaslight women and to pretending that males are women and giving up their spaces and being forced to feel uncomfortable or unsafe or whatever, but I think it's also cruel to trans-identified kids and adults. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that the, that, that person in that GameStop who, who really lost control was so furious so angry that's that's what's going to happen you're going to see a lot of that because 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 what's happening is is a, a lot of kids have a, a very woke and supportive immediate group uh where their their choices are respected and stuff like that but once you get into into the wider world it it, it gets a lot more messy and i think we're sending a lot of i think trans ideology sends a lot of kids out into the world unprepared for some of the pushback that they'll get mm -hmm. you know and it's just a shame that it's, it's a shame because i think feminists would be fantastic allies in helping trans people survive those you know situations and problems but it's being wrecked it's the whole kind of friendship that's always existed between trans people and women is just being destroyed by 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 th this weird male entitlement where where the, like one thing that i that it, that i i find really interesting is um is how the language of of the activism is all oh, is often by some of the worst people expressed in an incredibly militaristic and violent way like someone uh was was tweeting kind of threats to me um uh yesterday today and yesterday you know and one of the one of the things they they uh and this is a trans a trans woman and one of the photographs is, is someone on a firing range with a machine gun you know and that's more like an alt-right threat than than a threat that i would i don't think i've ever seen a woman tweet something like that you know except those nra uh not bags yeah <laughs> you know but 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 the, the 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 i do notice that it's almost as if it's almost as if a group of men have thought i know what political activism is political activism is is shouting and getting angry and and closing down meetings and throwing bricks and stuff like this but but that's not that that's not how 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 feminist activism has been feminist act activism it seems to me has always been peaceful and talks things through and tries to tries you know is is angry when it needs to be but is but is but is is supportive when it needs to be as well and and it's just being it, it, feminist activism is being poisoned by a male uh, quality that's that's totally unnatural for it yeah well i think and yeah and of course yeah feminists get angry and have staged you know really confrontational protests but i've never ever seen a feminist threaten another person with like <laughs> threaten to kill them or threaten them with violence i mean it's so or had a icy. baseball bat with turf turf written on it and all this yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah, with barbed wire wrapped around it. I mean, good lord. And I I was I was listening to an interview um 
an interview that John Kay and Deborah So did. Um, actually, well, I was listening to it because I was in the podcast, but I do listen <laughs> to podcasts that don't include me also. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. anyway, the other person that they interviewed in the podcast. So I, I can't wait till this comes out. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other person that they interviewed for the podcast. So it was a podcast about transgenderism slash trans activism, I guess. So they had my perspective and then they interviewed a trans activist. And this person was saying, well, you know, so so John asked, you know, what about all this violence coming from trans activists? Like, surely you don't agree with that. I mean, there's a lot of violent threats and like a woman got beaten up at Speaker's Corner, like and before a meeting that they were trying to have about gender identity legislation. Um, and... And this person was just like, well, you know, it goes both ways. I've seen it on both ends. Like, it's not nobody should do that. Everybody needs to stop doing that. And it's like, where are the receipts? Where have you ever yeah. seen a feminist at the fucking dyke march holding a baseball bat with barbed <laughs> wire? Like, yeah. where have you yeah. seen feminists gathering in groups and threatening and harassing and punching trans activists. I mean, feminists don't even try to shut down trans activist events. I mean, have your events, have your spaces, have your conversations. Mm. No one's trying to stop you from doing that. The only mm. people who are being harassed and threatened and shut down and no platformed are the women, are the feminists who are trying to have reasonable conversations. And if you watch the conversations, because many of them are on video, like I filmed or, you know, we filmed that last event that I had at the Vancouver yeah. Public Library to talk about gender identity and women's rights. And the conversations are so reasonable. The women are compassionate. You know, our concerns make sense. We don't respond to questions in hostile ways. We really mm. genuinely are trying to have an honest conversation. And if you watch them, you see, you see that, like, no, mm. it doesn't go both ways. But that's what they're frightened of. That's that's why they want to shut down debate and they want to, they, they get, like someone like Julie Bindle over here. Julie Bindle has, Bindle has done so much for women over here, including yeah. Uh, helping women in prison, you know, um, uh, and uh, she has been silenced for 15 years because she made a joke about something to do with hose pipe down your pants or something like that. Mm -hmm. she, she, 15 years for that joke, you know, and and I I was sucked into it so much that it took me ages until I actually decided to start um, wading in on this. It took me ages to get the guts to follow her. Because I thought right. there must be something to it, yeah. you know, and so eventually I found out. Oh no, she's just she's just an outspoken lesbian. And basically, any outspoken, you know, I, I the the only outspoken lesbians who are permitted to speak are those who tow the party line, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But but um, uh, there was something else I was going to say uh, to all that. Um, but the re it's an interesting thing. I just appeared on RTE in Ireland, which is Ireland's uh, Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, actually, just because I just read that there was a petition to have you removed from the yeah. segment. There was. I can't remember how many people signed, but it might have been something like 4,000 people signed, which is a lot for Ireland, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was a protest outside RTE. Oh. And I appeared, I appeared for four minutes on the show, and I said... You know, then I can't. I I don't know what bits they use. I haven't I used. I haven't seen it yet. But I remember from my from from what I said what I I always say, which is you know there needs to be more studies that aren't protested against by by trans activists, so that we actually know what the real suicide stats are, what the real um, uh, detransitioning stats are. Yeah. But as you know. Every time they try and do a study, uh, the scientists are harassed and threatened. So there's a chilling effect, and, and uh, these studies don't get done. So I was talking about that. I was talking about whether, you know, the idea of early affirmation uh, or early, uh, <coughs> I think that's the word, uh, early affirmation um, uh, for kids is is wise, given that so many kids detransition. So given 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 that so many kids who, if they don't transition, lose their feelings of gender dysphoria and 
that when they do transition, the suicidal ideation that's always used as a as a hammer to beat everyone with doesn't decrease. Mm-hmm. You know, so so to so to actually say these things, I mean, I was on the show and 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 because as I say, so many people don't want to talk about it or they hate the discussion or whatever. You know, so to be able to be interviewed. The relief of being able to talk about this stuff, you know, and it went out last night, and I think that I could be wrong, but I think the general feeling is that it's a bit, it was a bit of a damp squib, because everyone's expecting me to to come in like 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 Yosemite Sam and and fire guns in the air and talk talk uh, <laughs> uh, 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 hatred for five minutes. Yeah, just saw me making a number of kind of sober points, you know. Totally. So, and that's what they're scared of. Totally. They really don't want to hear hear that actually there's a lot of uh, things we do need to talk about. And, you know, the, the hashtag no debate. I always think that no debate is, is one of the cleverest uh, things they've done. Actually, sorry, to I, I don't want to rant on, but can I tell you a story that, I, that always reminds me of no debate? Yeah. There, do you remember? Do you remember the film? Um, uh, it was the original film before it became a TV show, Catfish. Uh, yes, yeah, I do. The, the actual film, yeah, right? Yeah. Now I I saw the trailer for Catfish, and it looked like a horror movie, you know. And I love horror movies, you know. And the trailer was, you know, the guy on the phone talking to someone, and then drive. They were driving somewhere really remote, you know, and. And the last scene in the trailer is like a darkened driveway and a guy coming up to a, a closed garage door and it all looks it all looks really um, uh, scary and threatening. And the thing at the end says something like, a review says, the last 10 minutes, you won't believe what happens. Something like that, you know. They sold it as a horror movie, you know. And I was w- watching it I was thinking, that looks amazing because it looks like a documentary. I thought it was a horror movie. I thought it was another Blair Witch Project. I said, that looks like a documentary. <clears throat> or, or, or I don't know if that's a documentary, or I, I don't know if it's a horror movie. If it is a documentary, it's going to be terrifying. And if it's not a, a documentary, it's going to be a brilliant horror movie. And I was just really excited about it. And all the posters said the same thing. It was genius, really. All the posters said the same thing. They said, don't let anyone tell you about it. <laughs> right? Yeah. They all said that. Don't let anyone tell you about it. And I was at a party with a friend, uh, um, uh, uh, a friend of mine, and she, <laughs> I said, I'm really looking forward to Catfish. It looks really scary. <laughs> and she said, she said, well, and I said, don't tell me. I said, don't tell me anything. I don't want to know. I, <laughs> I, I want to go in blind. And I went in, and it's just about this bloody woman. <laughs> It rings him up and says he's she's a teen. Who cares? I couldn't believe it. I was so angry, and, and <laughs> I, just, I was just so angry. And 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 you know, I think the, the conversation is a little bit like that. It's like it's like no debate. Don't don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. I saw there's there's someone over in um, in uh, in Ireland, and they posted up on their Instagram thing, uh, uh, on their Instagram a thing saying. Uh, it said something like, trans women are women, so let's have a cup of tea and go swimming. Something like that, you know? Trans women, no, trans women are women, so let's forget about it and go swimming. It was something like that. And I just thought, that is perfect, because it's, what it's saying is, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Just accept it, you know? Yeah. Don't think about the implications. Don't think about Karen White in prison. Don't think about uh, Baltimore, our friend. Don't think about about any of these um, uh, 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 things that complicate the issue. Just say trans women are women. Let's yeah. go swim. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, and they, yeah, they they sort of frame it as like, what is your problem? This has nothing to do with you. Like, live and let let people live their lives. Stop trying to stop us from existing. And it's like, no one. I mean, if anyone, feminists want people to be able to live their life and be gender non-conforming or whatever you want to call it, you know, not conform to these stereotypes of masculinity and femininity. If anything, feminists have been the ones fighting for this. If anyone who is going to support you to wear what you want and have long hair and wear a dress if you feel like it or for women to like refuse to wear dresses and makeup and to, you know, look masculine or whatever. Feminists are going to support that. And it's like the re- the entire reason that we've been forced to start talking about this all the fucking time <laughs> is because 
of the impacts that it's starting to have on us, on women, because we yeah. have concerns about how this legislation is going to impact women's rights. That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about what you do in your personal life at home or what kind of clothes you want to wear or what you want to do with your face or even these surgeries. I mean, I'm, I'm critical of cosmetic surgery for women, so naturally I would also be critical of cosmetic surgery for men who want to become women but i mean all at the same it's like if you want to do that then you can do that i think that's kind of like a really a really big decision that's going to have a really big impact on your life and is probably going to be quite painful and potentially dangerous but i'm not trying to stop somebody from having those surgeries if they really want to have those surgeries it's such mm. a it's such a lie but you're right it is really effective because that's what people say to me or say about me it's like oh well why does she care what is it to her like what difference yeah. does it make to her let people live their lives and it's like do you think i'd be talking about this if it didn't have a real impact do you think that feminists would be having these meetings and having protests and that we'd be going on and on about this on twitter all the time if it, we weren't re really genuinely concerned that something bad was happening or that something bad might potentially happen yeah, yeah, and and all the things that might potentially happen, they're 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 so obvious. They're so ob They're so they're so preventable. They're obvious. Uh, 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 feminists are going blue in the face, saying this will happen, this will happen, this will happen, and then these things happen, and and yet still they're able to dismiss it and say, oh, you're, you know, the the thing I think that the 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 cycle that these things usually take is uh, this will never happen. Oh, here's an example of it happening. You're saying that all trans people are like that. You know, that's what I get every single time. This will never happen. Here it is happening. You're you're painting all trans people with the same brush. It's like it's like no. We're just giving you what you said that wouldn't happen. We're showing you the thing you said wouldn't happen happening. In fact, I I found a site today that's going to be very useful useful on Facebook called This Never Happens. So mm -hmm. I think I'll be I'll be I'll be. I'll be looking at that at some point. Yeah. Um, but but I better I better I better wrap it up. I guess. Um, yeah. I mean, I just want to. This is a good interview. <laughs> it's I, kind of weird because you called me, but I I was I was more interested in in finding out because <laughs> everyone knows the 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 trouble I've been getting into, but no one knows. You know, since you got kicked off Twitter, I, I wanted to make sure that you you know people knew what was happening with you you know oh, I appreciate that I mean I do uh, I want I do have a couple questions that I want to ask just for people who maybe haven't oh. been following what's going on with you here in Canada yeah, I didn't introduce myself or anything who maybe are you, you? Can put this maybe you can put this at the start <laughs> I just called this strange man on Skype he has all these opinions about transgenderism he's been going on and on and yeah. on who are you no I'm, I, I'm, an, I'm your neighbor <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, so what, I mean, can I ask you what first brought you to turfdom? Um, well, uh, I, I, the, the thing that, uh, kind of got people, uh, angry, first of all, was an episode of the IT crowd I did called, um, the internet is coming, okay. which is a, it's a real shame because because half of the internet is coming is a really funny episode. I'm really proud of it. But the other half is this story where uh, a very macho uh, guy who's the boss of this company uh, falls in love with a with a trans woman. You know, um, you know, uh, it's she 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 we, the actress who played her was was a, was a naked woman and and there was no we didn't play any differences uh, physically. We didn't play any jokes. Um, about that aspect uh, of you know uh, nothing about her Adam's apple or anything like that nothing uh, but it was still pretty cheap in the sense that in the sense that uh, the joke of it was that she was she was still kind of be displaying a lot of male pattern behavior you know and and that's what made her the perfect girlfriend for this very macho guy that was the joke and it was it wasn't really that strong and and uh, you know there's loads of reasons for that. One is not knowing enough about the subject. Another is uh, at that point I was quite insecure uh, as a writer because I was I I just stopped writing with a partner and I was I was writing my first thing on my own. So I didn't really know how to how to 
uh, change it as as much as I would now, you know. Um, and I didn't really know there was a problem. I kind of thought, oh yeah, this is a this is a, this is a fine joke. This will do. And Matt Berry was very funny as he always as always is, and and our brilliant actress who played. Oh, I can't remember. Her. I'll have to find it. I'll have to find. It. Oh God, that's really annoying. What is the actress's name? Uh, I'll find out in a sec. Um, but um, uh, uh, but yeah, it was. It, it it had its moments. But when it went out, I immediately got a lot of crap about it, and and I was kind of confused because I just thought, well, you know, it's just a silly story. It's not. It's not supposed to be a real examination of what a relationship like this would be like, you know. Um, but uh, one thing that happened was at the end, I had a, I had what I thought was a very funny finale, which was um, uh, uh, the character breaks up with her, and she reacts in a very masculine way, and they have a fight. They have a they have a matrix. I described it as a matrix style fight, and we got a stunt man in, and I was really excited because I was shooting a fight sequence because I love I love action movies as well, you know. Uh, uh, so that was what I was doing. I was thinking, hey, this is going to be a brilliant ten minute fight at the end of the thing, which is something you don't see in sitcoms. So I thought this would be great. And at the end of it, he 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 pushes her through a a a, a, play, a plate a kind of window and. And, and she's lying on the floor. I don't know why I did it that way, because if I'd had any sense, I would have had her push him through the window and that wow. would have made everything fine, you know, or at least less, less bad. Um, and of course, I got all these things saying, oh, you know, how many people have been, how many trans women have been attacked and all this stuff. So I just thought, well, it is what it is. I can't go back and change it. It's going to it's going to have to be the thing. So 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 then I noticed that down through the years, Every so often, I would get a letter or a thing saying, you're a transphobe, you're this, you're that. And I, I kind of noticed that to, to a certain strata of the internet, that is how I was seen. Um, uh, and I, I I just started thinking, and a lot of people were saying, my trans friend did this and my trans friend did that. And I just started thinking, how, well, wait a second, why, why are trans rights suddenly the most important rights in the world, you know? And the more I found out about it, the more I realized that there was a reason that the, the coverage of it was so lopsided. And, it, you know, it seemed it, I, the more I found out about it, the more I realized it was because uh, a lot of a lot of the activism is dominated by men, you know, mm. and, and a lot of the activism that we we you and I have a problem with is dominated by men. There's never any you never you know, I think it, there's a reason why you never hear trans men are men get over it. You don't hear that at all. But it, but it's a land grab for on women's re, spaces. Yeah, you know, trans but, women but or women down, is the mantra that you hear over and over and over again. Yeah, you never hear trans men are men, and it's because you know, uh, you know, there's loads of reasons. Trans men would not want to compete in men's sport. You know, mm -hmm. uh, trans men would not want to get into women's prisons or women's private. Uh, sorry, men's prisons or men's private spaces. You know. The, 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 that side of things is could never be as demanding as and as entitled as the other way around, you know. So I started noticing this, and I noticed as well that feminists were being silenced and harassed and having turf spat at them and all this sort of stuff. So I just became more and more interested in it. And then uh, this year I had cancer. And I, I uh, it was, it was fine. It was just a little touch of it. It was the good. It was the best kind of cancer a man can get. Um, and, uh, and and as I was recovering, I kind of thought, well, um, everything has been cancelled. There was all this stuff that I was supposed to do, but it's all been cancelled. I don't really have anything on. So why don't I dive into this? And and I kind of thought, I knew it was going to be bad. I knew I was going to get abuse. Um, uh, but I was a little naive in the sense that I didn't realize they'd come after my my wife, which they did, um, and that was that was that was tough for a while. But, what happened with your wife? Uh, they doxed her. They, there was a there was a there was someone who who I'm dealing with, and they basically put uh, put information uh, related to one of her businesses online. You know, so suddenly she's feeling very vulnerable and very frightened, and she she she. Uh, I told her that she should not get involved in it because I I did I knew that women get a much harder time than men. So I said, no, you just stay out of it. And 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 even though she's not involved in it, and she kind of uh, uh, deliberately uh, doesn't uh, 
wrestle with it because it would take up she knows it would take up too much of her time because it consumes me you know mm -hmm. uh, um so she hasn't been um diving into it, but they still came after her mm -hmm. you know because it's the quickest way to shut me up yeah you know? so and, and have um, there been other repercussions for you like in terms of i don't know your your work or anything like that no because as i say um most most people know what it is you know i think you know when i meet people in real life a lot of them are apologetic that they're not they're not supporting me um uh, uh publicly yeah uh, that happens to uh, me too i see people at parties and they're like oh i really support what you're doing i can't believe what's happening to you yeah yeah and it's so frustrating because it's like wow if if you said something or two if two or three of you said something then it, it would be all over i'd be able to stop doing this to the extent that i am but but I can't. I can't do it until other. I can't stop until other people start stepping up because, because for for a bunch of reasons. One is that uh, everyone calls me a bigot, and as long as people are continuing to call me that, I won't stop talking about it because I, I feel quite secure in the. I feel quite secure that if I keep trying to be reasonable and keep trying to make reasonable points, eventually people will start to say, hey, hang on a second, everyone's calling Graham Lennon the bigot, and he's not saying anything bigoted, you know? So uh, so I have to keep going until that happens, until at least, I don't know, one or two people start saying, Graham Lennon is actually right. This is not This is not uh, fair, what's happening, and it's, 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 uh, it's hurting. Uh, as I believe it is, it's hurting not just women, but the whole of the LGBT movement. You know, I think it's I think it's just terrible, really, really terrible. But I'm getting a bit I'm getting a bit smarter about it. I'm not doing everything online now. I've 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 I'm making some contacts uh, in real life that 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 I think are going to help a little mm -hmm. bit. And, mm -hmm. and I had a nice experience when I was on the radio the other morning where I was interviewed on on a radio phone in show. Ireland loves its radio phone in shows. And uh, I rang into one, and you know, I, I I was prepared for a debate, and I knew I I but but the way I feel now is that I'm so I'm quite well versed in all this, so I thought I'll I'll um you know I'm not I'm not nervous going into them, and they had a trans woman on who who uh who was up against me, but they allowed me to speak first, so I spoke first, and I talked about some of my my problems, you know, that the, the lack of research, uh, uh, and I said what I what I've said to you. You know, of course, you would be courteous to a trans woman and stuff. But, and I said, there's certain things that are problematic and difficult, and, and we need to talk about them. Like, like the to to take the courtesy of of trans women or women and to turn that into a literal truth, is is damaging. And we can already see the damage in things like, um, like for instance, I was talking about when I when I had cancer. Uh, I remember one of the very very important things you need is clarity when you're reading documents about what you have and what you should do and stuff like that, you need clarity. So when you get women's health and you start muddying the waters by using phrases like uterus havers or menstruators and stuff like this, that's not clarity. That's, that's suddenly confusing and weird. And why are you talking about me like this? And insulting, you know, if you're, if you're a woman who has cancer and you start getting talked about in these fucking debased terms, then, uh, you know, how dare they try and do that? You know, how dare they try and do that to people, you know? Um, uh, and, and you know, I got into trouble. There's a, there was a, there was a, I, feel, I do feel bad about it in a way because, because this person just walked into it. But there was a comedian over here and she called women bleeders in a post. And I went mad because I, I, I just, um, I've got a knee-jerk reaction to that now. I get very, very angry. Well, it's such an offensive way to describe women. But the the problem is that all, there's a there's there's all these liberal feminists who who whose immediate whose immediate group are all quite privileged, quite quite successful. Uh, you know, they're not their lives aren't aren't hard. I mean, they're hard in the way that all women's lives are hard harder than men's are. But, but they're not, you know, vulnerable women in prison. They're not abused women, they're, you know. And those are the women who, who you don't want to call them fucking bleeders because they're going through stuff that is, is such a world away from your existence. You, you have no idea what, to, to, what that kind of language can do to someone who's already feeling 
Well, like there is. Yeah, it's like you book. learn these these words in college. Like like you say, these are like middle class, university educated, you know, relatively privileged people who are going around using this language and forcing this language on other people and pretending that they're doing it in defense of the marginalized, you know, calling themselves intersectional. And it's like, no, you're just using a bunch of weird postmodernist academic jargon that nobody else understands, that nobody else can relate to, that doesn't describe most real women's actual lives around the world. Like they have such small circles and they they have no concept of yeah. you know they, i mean they're women so they should understand what it's like to be a woman but they also seem to have no concept of the real struggles that most women in the world and other parts of the world deal with yeah yeah and and you know i the big story over here to to do with uh uh, uh with prisons was was the karen white story karen white was a uh, is a male pedophile rapist guy who who somehow managed to con his way all the way into a women's prison and when he got there he sexually assaulted four women you know and the thing i always say to people is 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 that's four women too many you know not one woman should have to suffer because because stonewall project the words trans women are women get over it on the side of a building not a single woman should suffer because of that kind of ideology you know and 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 the thing i always think is is you don't have to do much to change that kind of um, culture you don't have to you don't have to say uh uh for instance trans women are women it's lovely but don't say get over it <laughs> do you know what i mean i i i'm i i would argue with trans women are women a, a, a lot but i'm happy to 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 be courteous to 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 trans women who respect women you know but i won't be courteous to to anyone who doesn't so the idea that we have to have a one size fits all rule to people who are uh, often very violent and and very entitled and a lot of misogynists no i'm sorry i'll never call them women i'll call i'll call my my trans friends who who i who who seem to like women i'll definitely call them she and her and whatever and i think of them in that way you know because they have that thing that a lot of that women have often a kind of uh ease about them that's that's you know that's that's i like being around um uh but the ones that i the ones that i will never gender correctly and i always avoid situations where i have to say he or she or whatever uh, I won't do it. I won't do it. I refuse to because they don't deserve it. If you don't like women, then you don't get to call yourself a woman. Well, and there's also the issue of that. There's there's one thing. I mean, I don't think that any woman should have to call a man a woman, whether to be polite or whatever. But I mean, there's one thing when you're in your personal life and you're talking to a friend and it's another thing when you're taking public positions on things. And when we're talking about, again, legislation and policy that have the potential and are causing real harm. So to to capitulate yes. in that way in the public sphere in this kind of debate I think is 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 different than how you engage yeah. with your friends in your personal life, right? Well, I'll give you I'll give you an example of something that that's that I found very sad. My dog is going nuts for some reason. Uh, but but I found this very sad. I have a trans friend here um, in Norwich uh, who uh i've met through all this and uh and she's great you know she's lovely and, and we, we get on very well and she is in a relationship with a with a woman and she's also gender critical in the sense that you know she agrees with me she agrees with gender critical feminists she's very worried about her own protections being undermined by ideas such as self-id and stuff like that you know but but a few, a few days before Christmas, or just after Christmas, she she wrote a post about how, after years of uh, being in this relationship with this woman, she's realized that she can no longer think of herself as a lesbian, because she does not want to appropriate lesbians' real experiences in the current in the current situation in the current circumstances. She doesn't think she can, you know. She she so she is very clear when she says. Uh, she will say, I don't know what she would say. I, I presume she would avoid avoid talking about it. But but she made this very 
she made this announcement that she's no longer going to describe herself as being in a lesbian relationship. And, and, and the thing about that is, for her and her partner, this must have been just a small, nice, guarded thing that they had together, that they were able to t think of each other in this way. And that's been robbed by this debate and it's been robbed by these extremists you know and that's what I, that's another example of what i mean when i say that i think this whole ideology is damaging not just women but but trans people and the people who it won't damage are those ones who are taking a little holiday in another person's lived reality and can just identify out of it when they want you know it it, it infuriates me <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it infuriates me also um <laughs> I know, it's not much of a debate if we're both going to agree with each other. <laughs> <laughs> Great to talk to you about all the things that we agree on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, a, what, a, what a fascinating bit of viewing this will be. <laughs> it, has been, it has been great to talk to you, though. I'm so glad that we got a chance to connect finally face to face instead of just on Twitter. And I really appreciate, well, I appreciated all the support on Twitter. <laughs> oh well, you know, I'm going to keep doing it, and I'm not going to I'm not going to stop talking about you until they get you back on. It's 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 ridiculous, you know. And and I hope that if I do get kicked off the platform, which looks more and more likely every day, I get a couple of reports. Oh really? Saying, yeah, every single day. Uh, but they never they like they never do it because I I don't say anything bad. <laughs> I've never said I don't say bigoted things, you know. Um, uh, but but I think. Uh, uh, if I do go down, I hope I, I hope I go down while while uh, you know uh, protesting what happened to you. So um, yeah, let's try and let's let's see what happens. Great, <laughs> thank you again for talking to me. I really appreciate it. It's been great, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get yeah. over to the UK someday. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, let's let's have some, have some food and and talk more about. It. Let's turf some more. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, take good care. Oh, all right. Bye-bye, Megan. Lovely bye. to talk to you. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.